Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's sixth grade math lesson. I'm Shana Holmes, the secondary math facilitator. We are going to be reviewing some fluency this week with unit rates, and then we're going to talk about how to use those unit rates to create equations and also look at tables and graphs with those equations. So let's begin with the warm up. So, which do you think is the better buy? The five pound jug of honey? for $15.35 or the three one and a half pound jar of honey for $13.05. Pause the video and take a moment to determine a good strategy to prove which one is the better buy and why. You may use a calculator for this. So when I started to solve this, I thought it was really difficult for me to compare a five pound jar and, a th and three one and a half pound jars. Um, so I decided to just add up the one and a half uh, pound jars. So I got four and five tenths or 4.5 pounds for uh, $13.05 and then I had the I still had I didn't do anything to the five pounds so I still had a five pound jar for $15.35 but even when I got this I was still unsure how to compare the four and a half pound jar and the five pound jar because they were they had diff, they were worth different amounts so I decided that what would be best would be to find the unit rate of each meaning I was going to find out how much, how much money per pound each of the deals were. So I took the first one, which was $15.35, and I divided it by five, and I got $3.07 per pound. So that means in that five-pound jar, each one of those pounds is worth $3.07. Then I did the next one, which was uh, $13.05 divided by four and a half, which, uh, which was what I got when I added up the, what, the three one and a half pound jars, and I got $2.90 per pound. So then, this ends up being a um, 17 cent difference with the three smaller one and a half pound jars actually being the better buy. So in today's lesson, we will review how to write an equation to express one quantity thought of as a dependent variable in terms of the other quantity thought of as an independent variable. So let's first look at some vocabulary that you will need to know in the lesson. So let's look at an example. This graph has numbers on the bottom which show time in minutes. It runs from zero to six. Now you don't see the zero on there, but we can assume that it starts at zero, which is the origin. So it does have an arrow, which means that the graph is continuous, which means it can go on past six, six minutes. So this is the x-axis, which represents the um, independent variables. The left side of the graph has numbers that represent the distance in meters. So these numbers are in intervals of 10, and it's very important that you would pay attention to the numbers and to uh, decide what the interval is, if it's 1 or 2 or whatever. So this is the y-axis, which represents the dependent variables. So not every, but in most situations, time is independent. Not always, but most of the time. It is an independent variable. So most quantities that have a relationship depend on time. For example, it may take me 30 minutes to cook a batch of 24 cookies. The amount of cookies that I bake is dependent on the amount of time that passes. So the more time that goes by, the more cookies I could make. So I can interpret this graph, which this is a distance time graph. These, you will see these graphs more often than any other. 
So I can interpret this as for every one minute that passes, the distance increases by 10 meters. So uh, the equation would be y equals 10x, x being time in minutes and y being the total distance. Now let's look at a table of values. This table shows the number of games labeled X. This is the independent, the independent variable. And the total cost labeled Y, which is the dependent variable. So I can see that at the, from the table that for every one game, the cost is $4. So therefore, to get the y values, the total cost, the x values must be multiplied by 4. So the equation is y equals 4x. I can think of this uh, as if I purchase three games, it would cost me $12, four games, $16. So if the table were not completely filled in, though, a good strategy to use would be to find the unit rate. This means I would need to find the price of just one game. So if you think back to the opener that we just did about the jars of honey, the strategy that I used was to find the unit rate per one. So it was a good strategy for me to find the price per one pound so that I could compare the two deals. So you do this by dividing. So in this table, I could divide $12 by three games and find out the unit rate for one game. So 12 divided by three would be four. 16 divided by four would be four. So that tells me the price per one game. Okay, so now we're gonna watch a short video. So first I want you to think about what's going on in the video. What do you notice? And then I want you to think about what are the independent and dependent variables in this situation and what is the relationship between them. Okay, so pause this video if you need um, a second to get your thoughts together. And remember that I had asked about, you know, what do you notice, what's going on, and then what do you think the independent and dependent variables are in the situation? Okay, so hopefully you noticed that the video showed a customer getting gas. It is not an ATM because I have had kids think it was an ATM. No, it's not an ATM. It's, it's like it's a gas pump. So what relationship did you see going on here? So the gas pump shows the amount of gas he put in his truck and the amount of money that it cost. So these will be our independent and dependent variables. So what quantity in this situation is dependent on the other? The amount of money is the dependent variable. The amount of money I spend is dependent on how much gas I get. The more gas I get, the more money I will pay. So not always, but typically money is a dependent variable. Just like when I talked about time, that time is typically um, an independent variable. 
not always, but most of the time, most situations or scenarios that you will see, uh, money will be dependent. Because it, however much of some type of something that you purchase, the money will depend upon how much you get, obviously. Okay, so if the dependent variable is the total amount of money, which is Y, then the independent variable has to be the amount of gas in liters, which is X. So um, use your calculator to find the price per one liter of gas. So they, on the gas pump, it showed that he had spent uh, $20.29. I think he actually went over that, but we're gonna use these numbers. So $20.29, and he got 14.819, or 14 and 800, 819 thousandths uh, liters of gas. So remember, we're gonna use division in order to find the unit rate. So take a moment and do that. Okay, so I believe that I got, um, I got 1.369 was my, the actual, and I think it actually continued on, but um, I just rounded it up because one point. 1.369, the 9 would round the 6, the 6 up to 7. So I rounded it to $1.37 per 1 liter of gas. So the equation for this situation, which that's the important part because that is where your packet, where that's what we're going to be talking about is how we can create an equation from these situations. So that's why it's important you know what the dependent and independent variables are. So the equation would be um, one, $1.37x equals y. So x would represent the amount of gas in liters, and y would represent the total amount of money. Okay, so for the next part of the lesson, you will need your week five packet and a pencil. So all of the skills that we just practiced here with unit rate and creating equations and looking at tables and graphs, these will help aid us with the problems in the packet. Your packet should have questions A through E. So we are gonna actually start with A and then we're gonna work um, down. I encourage you to fold uh, your answers like I have done, fold them. Um, so that we can work the problems together. So you, if you need a scrap piece of paper or a calculator, feel free to get that at this time. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry, I have a Band-Aid because I cut myself um, trying to cook. And it didn't turn out well. Um, I'm also sorry about this chicken scratch right here. I just uh, started working and uh, got carried away. Okay, so it says the graph shows a relationship between two variables. Uh, describe a possible situation, which I denoted that a situation that the graph could represent, and then write the equation for the situation. Okay, so two things that we have to do. Okay, so um, the first thing that I always look at when I am given either a graph or a table is to make sure that I can uh, read it properly. So here's my X values and my Y values. And right here I can see that I have values that are missing on the X value down at the bottom and then also on the Y axis. So I'm gonna actually, we don't need to find both of them for this uh, problem, but I'm gonna show you how to do that just so that you can find them in the future. Okay, so the, the first thing I need to see, what is the, what is this skipping by? So this is, the interval is actually two. So it's skipping by twos. It goes zero and then it goes two, four, six, and so on, okay? So in order to find what goes in between each, I need to see how many tick marks are in between. If this had two or three, I would need to divide by something different. But since I have two spaces here, I'm going to take two and I'm going to divide it in half because that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm taking two and I'm cutting it in half. And I get one. So that means that each one of these, this is going up by one. 
Okay, so this would be one, but I don't just put one in each of these uh, empty slots here. I've got to add one. So this would be three, this would be five, okay? I'm gonna do the same kind of thing and I'm gonna look um, on my, my y-axis. This is skipping by 12s. It goes 12, 24, 36. So I'm gonna take 12 and I'm gonna divide it in half and I get six. So that means that from this, that this first tick mark is six, and but I don't put six in between each one. I'm gonna add six. So this one is 18 and then 24 plus six is 30. I just like to have that for my own personal reference. We did need to know these that were missing down here on the X axis though. Okay, so it's asked to describe a possible situation. So before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that I know what the unit rate is because I don't know how to describe a situation where I don't know what the numbers mean yet. So we actually found that when we found these missing numbers. So one right here, my first point would be one and 12. And this tells me my unit rate. Twelve x. So that means that any any of these numbers down here on x, if I multiply them by twelve, I will end up getting y. That's on the y-axis. So let's check this. So that would um, that would also mean that my equation here would be twelve x equals y. So let's check that. So let me put something in place. Let's put three. So twelve times three is thirty six. When I have three here on the x-axis, I go up, it does equal 36. So I can interpret this graph that for every one, for every one that increases on the x value, it increases by 12 on the y values. So a possible scenario for that could be, let's see, um, what if I said for every one hour worked? I earned twelve dollars. I could also say that for every three hours, I earn thirty-six dollars because that would be that would end up being the same ratio, so it would end up being a one to twelve. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. I'm sorry that there's also like a like a shadow casted on. It's getting dark. A boat rental shop rents paddle boats for a fee plus an additional cost per hour. This is important, a fee plus a cost per hour. There's two things that we need to look for. Okay, the cost of renting for different number of hours is shown in the table. Okay, so something that stands out to me in this table is that it tells me that at zero, probably a lot of tables that you, I'm sorry, I don't wanna completely mark that out. But at most most tables that you've probably seen, at zero, there's a, the y would also equal zero. But here, it's zero equals 10. And that is really important because that tells us at zero hours, that's our fee. Okay, so I want to kind of explain something uh, or work through this kind of. So if I have a $10 fee... Think of that kind of like, um, let's say that I was going to an amusement park and I had a $5 um, admission fee. So that means that like whether I, and then let's say that it costs $3 to ride a ride. Ride a ride. Whether I ride any rides, I still have to pay this admission fee. So this $10 fee right here, I have it has to be paid no matter how many hours go past. Okay, but then it also tells me that at one hour, it is $11. At two hours, it equals 12. And at three hours, 
it is 13. So what I can do to find out like how much it is per hour, well, what is this, what is this moving up by? This is plus one per hour. I can also think about this if I um, subtracted 10 away from each of these. That would leave me with one, two, and three. So that's also going up by one. So in this situation, sorry, this situation right here, my equation would be 10, 10 plus one X equals Y. So X being the number of hours. So let's, let's make sure that's true. So if I, um, if I was at the boat rental for two hours, that would give me two plus 10 and that would be 12. So that is correct. So what is the independent and the dependent variables here? Okay, so this one's X and this is Y. So not like I, like I told you back in earlier in this video, not always, but a lot of the time, time is going to be independent. And in, in this case, it is. And then I also told you whenever we were doing the video about the gas, um, the cost of the sale of gas, the cost of money is usually dependent. That doesn't happen, that's not gonna be in every single scenario that you see, but probably in the vast majority of them. Because if you think about it, what, what does, what does time depend on? Time is constant. It, it moves no matter what. So that's kind of how I think about it. Okay, so let's look at our next problem. It says Ty borrowed $500 from his parents. The graph shows how much he owes them each month if he pays back a certain amount, a certain amount each month. Okay, so before I even go down here to my questions, let's make this kind of bigger. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the first graph. I'm gonna do it here because I can't really answer questions until I understand what's going on with the graph. So the first thing that you'll notice is that this is decreasing and it's decreasing because Ty is trying to pay back money. So the money is going down as the time and months goes by. Whenever you have a line that is decreasing, you are going to have an equation that has a negative in it. So this this one is kind of similar to part B where you kind of have, you're gonna have this other number here and I'm not gonna really get into the, the, what that equation, that literal equation looks like because you'll see that in seventh grade, but I'm starting off with $500. So I know that 500 has to be part of my equation Okay, but first off, but then I'm gonna look at my graph. Okay, so I have, um, I have this same kind of thing going on with my X values where they are, they're moving up by two. So I'm gonna take two, divide it by two. Once again, I get one. So that means in between each one of these, I'm gonna go up by one. So it goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that represents the months. Here, they also skip, but it skips by hundreds. And there's one tick mark in between. So that would be 100 divided by two, which gives me 50. So that means that in between each of these is, it is $50. So that would be 150, 250, 350, 450. My hand is hurting from how small this is. I wonder if your hand is also hurting. Oh, okay. So now I have to really, oh my gosh, let's kind of move in if we can. Okay, so I've got to think how much are each one of these, between each one of these little dots these plotted points, 
what is the value in between each one of them? Well, this one goes from five, from zero, it was 500. At one, it was 450, and at two, it was 400. So it's going down by $50. Okay, so what I can say about that, that that means that Ty owes $500. He pays back 50 each month. Okay, so now let's think about what that equation looks like. Kind of moving into this area over here in D section. Okay, so I have 500. Okay, so each month he is paying back $50. So remember I told you that was going to be negative because this this graph is decreasing equals y. I always always check my equation just like we did over here with these. I want to check it because I just want to make sure that when I plug these numbers in I'm going to get the these exact values. So let's say that I'm going to do after 4 months, okay? Remember, X is the number of months. So this would be, what is four times 50 is 200. And 500 minus 200 would be 300 e equals Y. So that would be $300 that he still owes. So let's make sure. I have four, I go up and it is 300. Okay, so my equation is correct. Now, one of the questions that you might ask is, well, why is the 500 not negative if he's trying to pay that back? And the reason is because if I had a negative 500, and let's say that I wanted to make this, pot, like I tried to make this positive, then it would show that he owes negative amount of dollars. Well, that means that his parents would owe him money, and that's not how that works. So that's why I always go back and I check my equation. Okay, so how much money does Ty have to pay back per month? We said $50 per month. You can also, let's, in, let's make sure that we understand what this bottom, what this 10 means right here. When this is at 10, it is zero. So what do you think that means when it's at 10, it's zero? So this would mean that at 10 months, Ty has paid it back. He owes zero amount of dollars. So at the 10 month mark, he's paid off the loan. Okay, so let's just kind of get this first part started and then I'm gonna let you go with the rest of them. Okay, so it says, Jameson downloaded two digital songs for $2.70. Complete the table below. Okay, so two, two digital songs. Okay, so that's 270 here. Okay, oh, how do I fill in the rest of this table? Okay, I can do a couple of different things. So 270 plus 270, I can add up 270. So, what is that, six? Oh, no, that's five. 540 would equal four, four songs. But four isn't an option up here. And so I think the best thing to do would be to find the unit rate. So remember that how you find the unit rate is you're gonna divide, okay? So if I divide 270 and I divide it by two, you will get your unit rate and then you will be able to fill in your table and answer the questions. Okay, so I am going to leave you with the rest of this to do on your own. I am going to give you your um, challenge problem for next week. It says, using the digits 0 to 9 at most, one time each, fill in the boxes to make a true equation. So just remember, you got to use 0 to 9 at most to fill it in. All right. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for a new lesson. Bye.